Ragnik has been absolutely brutal in his most recent interview as the Manchester United interim manager. The details of his upcoming advisory role at the club are still to be confirmed, but the interim manager believes he knows where the club needs to strengthen in the summer. Now, of course, United, after another abysmal draw at home against Leicester City, more points dropped. The season looks to, again, just be not, not just tapering out in a negative way, but the club looks more broken now, more disjointed, dysfunctional than it than at any other point that I have seen. And that isn't down to Ralph Ragnick per se. That is just an accumulation of four fouled managers, four fouled projects, four fouled philosophies on the bounce since the summer of 2013. But Ralph Ragnick has been brutal, absolutely brutal, raw, and to the point when speaking about Manchester United. And we'll get on to why a little bit later, but make sure like buttons are being smashed. Make sure you're subscribing to the Football Terrace and leaving us your comments below as well. Check out the Boohoo Man app as well for your 40% discount as well. It's obvious that something needs to, to be changed. Something needs to be rebuilt in the summer. The team could do with some more highly talented, hungry players who really want to develop their careers. Now, you Look at a few things he said there. Highly talented. We know we need better ability in certain positions at Manchester United. Central midfield, fullbacks. I think about those two areas hugely we are lacking. Of course, ideally, you'd like it in two or three other areas. Fullback, central midfield, absolutely massively important for Manchester United. I don't think it should be much about signing big names. I wouldn't mind big names. But for me, it's more important being competitive, hungry, seeing a move to a club. And I've always believed this, not only as a big contract, a big name club, but the next logical step in my career. And what I love about what he's talking about here, and you will see this, by the way, with the new Man United manager. If you listen to interviews from people like Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola, of course, they want high level. Of course, they want high ability players. But they need to be hungry. They need to be willing to learn and need to be willing to develop. And I think where this is brutal from Ragnick, so let's not get distracted from what he's saying here. There's two people that Ragnick's having a pop at, in my opinion, but in a professional way. He is telling the Glazers, the board, listen, you can go for your Declan Rices. You can go for your Harry Canes. I, he said that I wouldn't mind big names. But of course, big names cost big money. When you spend a hundred million pounds on Kane, maybe a hundred plus million on Declan Rice, that eats into your budget to, to protect and cover other areas. There are players, and we've, I'll give you an example. If you just sign Ruben Neves and Eve Basuma, that's about 40 million pounds cheaper than buying Declan Rice. And collectively, they make the squad better than Declan Rice by himself. This is a point a lot of people would, would throw out and make in relation to the midfield areas. There, there are gems out there. There are, there, there are hidden talents across Europe and across the world. Ralph Ragnick has been the expert at this. The talent of player at a young age that Ragnick and he's set up in, during the RB project globally have been able to unearth and find has been astronomical. Essentially, you want the next Harlan, the next Mane before they become the next Harlan and Mane. You're picking them up at, at, at tens and twenties and 25 million pounds as young players, and you develop them into the superstars that they are, that, 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 they're, that they're going to become. This way you can build a squad full of quality. And in his interview, he goes on to talk about, if you look at what Liverpool did, yes, they did sign some big names a couple of years into Klopp's reign. But when you look at the price tags of the Mo Salas, you look at the price tags of the Marnays, the price tag of the Robertsons, there was gems. There was a fair amount of money spent. But the quality you've had from Mane, the quality you've had from Salah, as examples for the money spent, some of the best signings in Premier League history, pound for pound, some of the best signings in Premier League history. And I'm really enjoying seeing Ralph Ragnick be so brutal. I'm enjoying seeing Ralph Ragnick be so harsh. Now, the next element, which is key, are the players that he's having a pop at, the players that he's having a go at in here. And just read these words again. Hungry players who really want to develop their own careers. 
And I think that's a big problem at Manchester United. Huge problem at the club. Everyone's resting on their laurels. And I said it in the match review after the 1 1 draw with Leicester. Our players are like hedge fund kids. They might get in because of daddy's best friend, they might get instilled in a high ranking job somewhere, going at sort of manager directorship level, earning a quarter of a million pound a year. But they're not going to put the hard yards in. They've had their education paid for. The money has got them through life to the position that they're in. They give it the big one. They act like they're successful. But these are silver spoon players. The name and the history of Man United makes them think they are part of that tapestry. And you're not. There ain't a player. Forget what you've done at other clubs. Barring Ronaldo and De Gea, because they were part of brilliant Manchester United teams. You could, you could argue Phil Jones, you know, he won titles as well. And I don't want to be disrespectful to him. But De Gea was a pivotal part in winning titles for United. And of course, Ronaldo was as well. They're the only two in this squad who are ingrained in the tapestry of Manchester United. The rest are not. The rest have done nothing. FA Cup, League Cup, Europa League. You've got to be winning league titles and Champions League to instill yourself, in my opinion. And, but they act like they've done something. And that's why they're like trust fund kids, silver spoon kids. Your dad or your granddad or your mom or your grandmother, they made the fortune. They made the money. They gave you the privilege. They gave you the advantage. And you're acting like you've achieved something. You were just lucky whose ball sack you came out of. You were just lucky by who was breastfeeding you. You've done nothing. And I've said it before. To be highly successful, you need ability and mentality. If the mentality isn't there, the ability becomes irrelevant. I want mentality first, build the foundation from it, and then you add the quality on top. If you add quality to a poisonous, rotten culture, it will damage that quality. And we, why, how, how have we seen this? Every top quality player that we have signed has failed at the football club. So ability merchants, please, eye test merchants, get with the program, fight for the behaviors and the structures and the attitude at the club, because when that's right, we can start to cook. That needs to be right, first of all. Now, on Ragnik, I've seen a lot of people, including me, listen, I'll be very open about it. He as the interim ma manager has failed. He has failed in, in doing that. It, it was a poor appointment to be for him to be interim. The crazy thing about all of this is we're not actually listening to his recommendations from a DOF point of view, which I believe he is world class at. This is this is Man United all over. We're having a go at Ragnick for being average at a job that he's never tried before, never done before, and never been spoken about as being, you know, an interim coach of a massive club in turmoil. It's weird, right? Giving him that job. But yet we're not taking advice from him from what he's brilliant at, and that is building clubs internally from the boardroom. It's a madness. And I want to address this because after 21 games, Ralph Ragnick is statistically Man United's worst manager since 1981. Now, look, that's a lot of likes and a lot of shares and a lot of people. This is before the Leicester game, to be fair. No, so after the Leicester game. So a lot of people are angry. A lot of people are, are sort of kicking off about this. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. But I'm hearing a lot of revisionism. We should have kept Oli. No, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. Listen, Oli needed to be sacked. Oli needed to go. Oli was taking this club backwards. Oli started to fail massively and had to be relieved of his duties. Let us not forget, let us not forget, okay, that 21% of all of Man United's home defeats in the Premier League era came under Oli. One in five of our defeats at home under Oli, he was only here for two and a half, practically three years. 13% of all Man United's Champions League defeats were under Oli. Man United's two worst ever starts to Premier League seasons. Losing more home games in the calendar year since 1989. Losing our historic records against the likes of Palace, Burnley, Sheffield United, Watford, Crystal Palace. Man United's longest losing streak since 1931. Man United's worst streak of failing to win in three in a row. 11 months. Previous was three months. It was a disaster in the end. Let us not rewrite history. Let us not overly focus. Listen, if you think Ralph has fouled as interim, don't take it out on Ralph. 
Look at the decision makers. Look at the people running this football club. Ralph's trying to direct us in that way. Ralph is making it abundantly clear. Higher quality players, but with hunger, with desire, with a determination, with the right mentality. Don't just go after the big players. Don't just go after the famous players. Don't. Buy what's right. Buy what's needed. Build slowly. Marinade. Do it right. Build a foundation. I mean this to a lot of United fans that just think, buy two or three techie players and bring in Ten Hag and we're fixed. No. So much more needs to happen. Xavi by himself isn't fixing Barca. Go and read, spend an hour researching all the changes behind the scenes since the summer. And look how quick they're back to looking good. And they're still probably a transfer window away, a couple of transfer windows away from being highly competitive again. But they'll be there quickly because they're adding quality on top of a solid foundation. It is sturdy. Manchester United remain in the mud. Manchester United remain in trouble. Manchester United remain highly problematic. Ragnick here, for me, being brutal towards his squad and brutal towards the board. We as United fans should be celebrating this interview, but we're not. We're focusing on him being a terrible interim manager, and I can't wait for the next coach to come in. And we are still missing the gigantic pink with red and green polka dot spots elephant in the room. That until we start to operate differently as a football club, until we start to focus on the key problems, the root cause issues at this club, nothing is going to get better. Doesn't matter who you sign. Doesn't matter who the manager is. We've got to get the structure right first. Hit the like and the share button. Subscribe to the Football Terrace. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you soon. Thank you.